it's reasonable to ask, what does it mean to say that the public supports the policy when the public doesn't know what the policy is? So you see, you know, there's a story that people sometimes tell that Americans don't care about civilian casualties. It turns out that's a lie, too. It's not true. The thing is that people can't care about that which they don't know about. So if nobody tells them that civilians are being killed, then they can't care about the civilian casualties that they don't know about. So this is why it's so important that we lift the lid on this policy. When critics say we need more transparency, you know, the word transparency sounds like a kind of, uh, kind of technocratic inside baseball world. Yeah, transparency, you know, you know, we're against the whole policy. Transparency. But you see, trans this issue of transparency and secrecy is a matter of life and death. It's because of the secrecy that they're allowed, that they're able to care about a policy which would be unpopular if people knew about it. Second reason to push on this issue of secrecy and transparency is because this is where the administration is most politically vulnerable. Even Lindsey Graham agrees the policy should be more transparent. The policy should be less secretive. So you see, the administration is very vulnerable uh, criticism on this. But why don't they want to share more information? Because every time they let a little bit of information out, people are scandalized. And the policy becomes more unpopular. For years, for years, members of the House and Senate have been writing to the administration saying, we want to see the Office of Legal Counsel memos that purport to justify the legality of this policy. And the administration refused to hand them over. Even to the Senate and House Intelligence Committee. Committees established by Congress in the 1970s for the express purpose of reviewing classified information. Even these committees were not allowed to see the memos that purport to justify the policy, which in a sense are the policy. Because if you don't, it's the, the memos that tell you what the administration, what their the legal authority that they're claiming, what the boundary of the policy is. So if you don't have the memos, you don't know what the policy is. And so you can't do oversight. Because how can you do oversight of a policy if you don't even know what the policy is? So finally, the administration decided under pressure, under pressure, key lesson, pressure works, not pressure doesn't work. Just writing a letter, that didn't work. But when there was a threat, then the administration started to move. So they leaked this white paper. This white paper was an unclassified document that had been previously shared with some in Congress that was a summary, an unclassified summary, of some of the information in the drone strike memos about targeting Americans. Well, what happened instead? What happened was an explosion because people read the memo. 16 pages showing that the administration was wiping its butt with international law, including uh, explaining that, according to the administration, the traditional concept of imminent threat is no longer relevant in this case. It's a key idea in international law and domestic law about when you can use force is, are you under imminent threat? And somebody attacks you, you can use force, no question about it. But if somebody's about to attack you, then you can use force. No question about it. But the administration said, we're in, in their white paper, we're in a new world now. Global war on terror, whatever you want to call it, post-September 11. We don't need to know, we don't need to have specific intelligence that these particular people have attacked the United States, are about to attack the United States, plan to attack the United States. It's enough for us to know, or think we know, that they're members of Al-Qaeda or of an associated force to Al-Qaeda. And if that's true, we think they're members of this associated force, then that's enough. Because even if they're not planning to attack the United States now, 
we can assume that they will attack the United States in the future when they get the chance. And we can't afford to wait while danger gathers. This was exactly the argument that Bush and Cheney and their people gave in 2002 for a preemptive strike against Iraq. We can't wait while danger gathers. Don't let the smoking gun be a mushroom cloud. That's what the administration is saying in this white paper. We can do a preemptive strike without evidence that we are about to be attacked. So Senator Mike Lee, Republican, asked Attorney General Holder about the white paper. And he said, I'm very concerned by what it says in this white paper about imminent threat and how you're claiming the legal authority off of any battlefield to attack someone about you, whom you have no evidence that they've attacked the United States. You have no evidence that they are about to attack the United States. You have no evidence that they're planning to attack the United States. I'm very concerned about what you're saying about imminent threat. And Attorney General Holder said, well, you can't understand this white paper in isolation. To understand the white paper, you have to read it in conjunction with the underlying legal advice on which it's based. By which he meant the Office of Legal Counsel memos that the administration refuses to disclose to Congress. Still to this day, the intelligence and judiciary committees don't have these documents which specify the legal authority that the administration is claiming to conduct drone strikes. We claim that we live in a democracy. The actuality of this policy are being kept secret from the American people, the American media, and members of Congress. Your members of Congress are being kept in the dark about this policy. Your guy Grassley is the ranking member on the Senate Judiciary Committee. We were just talking about this at dinner. You know, what can you do with Grassley? Well, what you can do with Grassley is say, you know, what are you doing? The administration is hiding this information from you. What are you going to do about that? So it's one thing to say, you know, people will say, oh, you know, we're very happy. We got this contract. The drones are coming to Iowa. That means jobs. I'm, I'm asking you to put a different question on the table. How do you feel about a secret and unaccountable war where we're not even allowed to know basic details about the policy? How do you feel about a Congress that's asleep and isn't doing minimal oversight? and pressing the administration to release these documents. My question for Senator Grassley would be, do you support a subpoena for the drone strike documents if the administration won't hand them over? And try to get him to answer this question on the record and say the word subpoena publicly. Let the word subpoena come out of his mouth. Let the press in Iowa report that Senator Grassley said the word subpoena administration has shown that in the absence of pressure, they're just going to continue with the status quo. So the question is, is Congress going to put pressure on the administration? And the thing that's going to answer that are members of the public putting pressure on Congress. We're holding Senator Grassley accountable. We're holding Senator Harkin accountable. We're holding the representatives from Iowa accountable because it's because of them. It's because of their silence, sitting on their hands, covering their eyes, that we have this policy that the administration is doing. We have this fight about the issue of civilian casualties. So the United States government, our government, our government, has a number, an official number, of the number of civilians it thinks it has killed in Pakistan with drone strikes since 2004. And that number is classified. Why? Why is that number classified? Is that a national security secret? Like the nuclear codes? Like the troop movements? Like the technical specifications on, on a nuclear submarine? 
They're not supposed to classify stuff just because it's politically embarrassing. So this is a question I would like you to ask the Iowa congressional delegation. Why is the U.S. government count of civilian dead in Pakistan classified? And why won't you force that number to be public? Every year, there's a bill in the House and the Senate called the National Defense Authorization Act. It's the Authorization Act for the, the Pentagon. How can we use the NDAA to make a fight about the drone strike policy? Get the Congress to try to pass legislation that will compel the administration to disclose more information about this policy. For you to hammer on the Iowa congressional delegation, how are you going to vote? on this legislation. So we have opportunities to force these people onto the record. Congress is a part of the problem. People talk, it's a key, crucial part of the problem. You can't have an imperial presidency without a sleeping Congress. You can get it, members of the House. You can turn members of the House. Even Republican members of the House, you can turn them if you get on them and stay on them. So we can turn these people if we stay on them. And I submit to you that you can turn people in Iowa against this policy, particularly with the right ask. Can you turn these people against drones? Can you get them to say, <laughs> the president must share information about what he's doing? That I, I submit to you you can make these people do. Figure out how to put pressure on your congressional delegation and figure out how to get in local media around these issues and stay there, uh, particularly around these issues of transparency and secrecy. The New York Times, since 2010, has, together with the ACLU, been suing the Obama administration in federal court under the Freedom of Information Act to release these same drone strike memos. You know, they smell a rat with the fact that the administration is hiding information. Let's press the adversary where the adversary is weak. Where the adversary is weak is on the issue of secrecy and transparency and their refusal to share basic information about this policy with Congress and the American people and try to get your representatives and senators on the record on this issue of secrecy, transparency, and information. Thank you.